What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is the series where I go into great detail with all of the stats of every one of the weapons in Modern Warfare, and in today's episode, we're finally getting caught up on all of the LMGs and covering the Holger 26. First up, as always, let's have a look at the damage profile. And with this LMG, we have the lowest damage in the LMG class. It deals a base damage of 28-23, meaning it's going to be a 4-5 to five shot kill. And it's worth noting that this damage applies anywhere in the body. Which is very strange because all of the other LMGs have a torso or upper torso multiplier to their damage. The Holger does not. It doesn't matter if you're shooting them in the chest or the foot, you're dealing the same amount of damage. We do, however, get a headshot multiplier of 1.49, and this gives us a headshot damage profile of 4234, and this means up close you do have to hit two headshots mixed in with a body shot in order to get a three shot kill, whereas at longer ranges just one single headshot mixed in with body shots will give us that four shot kill. Moving on to rate of fire, this is actually identical to the PKM at 759 rounds per minute, and this means that our theoretical minimum time to kill in the four shot kill range is 237 milliseconds, which is by far the slowest in the LMG category. Now compared to other guns, this isn't completely out of the realm of being competitive, but when it comes to LMGs, they usually have a much faster time to kill to make up for the fact that they have very slow handling. So with the Holger, it definitely doesn't excel in the time to kill department. However, if we manage to land those headshots, the two headshots mixed in with a body shot up close, this will give us a theoretical minimum time to kill of 158 milliseconds, which is much more competitive. As for our ranges, the range drop off is pretty standard for LMGs at 42 and a half meters. This is where we drop off to the five shot kill range. So that's pretty respectable with this gun. When we have a look at the suppressors, the lightweight suppressor will reduce this range by 25% and the monolithic will increase this by seven and a half. When it comes to hardcore modes, the Holger is always going to be a two shot kill unless you're shooting them in the head and therefore, when you also have a look at like the handling stats, which we'll have a look at in a little bit, this just isn't a very good gun for hardcore modes. Moving on to hipfire, as you can see here, we actually have pretty good hipfire spread for the LMG category. It is noticeably better than the PKM, M91, and MG34. As for our idle sway though, as you can see here, this actually has a decent amount of idle sway for an LMG. It is relatively slow moving, so that's not too bad, but it does move around a decent amount. Taking a look at recoil, as you can see here, it kicks upwards and fairly strong to the right as well. This isn't just a very slight lean to the right, it does pull pretty hard in that direction. However, there is very little side to side bounce with this. It does stay quite nicely on that recoil path. And this means if you are trying to reduce recoil, you should be focusing on attachments that help with recoil control rather than recoil stabilization. Now, moving on to the handling stats, our aimed out sight time is 450 milliseconds, which is extremely slow, but pretty much standard for the LMG category. Whereas our standard sprint out time is actually decent for an LMG at 284 milliseconds, and our tactical sprint out time is very, very slow at 500 milliseconds. So with this gun, I find it's actually okay to sprint around a little bit, but you do have to be even more careful than normal while using the tactical sprint option. Our magazine capacity with this is amazing at 100 rounds with 100 in reserve. And our reload add time, considering the fact that we have such a large magazine, is just 2.52 seconds, which is very, very fast for an LMG, but of course, quite a bit slower than all of the assault rifles in the game. If you did want to speed this up, you could use sleight of hand, which will cut this down to 1.72 seconds, which is fairly competitive with some of the assault rifles out there. So this is the one area I would say that the Holger really excels in. Very large magazine capacity and very respectable reload times for that magazine. As for our movement speed, this is not bad at all for the LMG category at 92%. It's kind of in between some of the other LMGs and assault rifles. However, our aim down sight straight speed is very slow like the other LMGs at just 37%. One last thing to mention before we get into some of the unique attachments is unlike many of the other LMGs, this gun does not have an open bolt design and therefore there is no open bolt delay with this. So that is another advantage that's worth mentioning over some of the other LMGs in the game. When you pull the trigger, the gun shoots immediately. But now that we have that out of the way, let's move into some of the unique attachments with the Holger and we're gonna kick it off with the barrels. There are only two barrels that you can unlock and the first one is the XRK Ultralight Barrel. With this one, we get an improvement to our aim down sight speed, and this helps by roughly two frames at 60 FPS, so our new aim down sight time is 417 milliseconds, which is still quite slow, but much faster than the base aim down sight speed. And the downside to this is a loss in bullet velocity, which also results in a 20% reduction to our damage range. So quite a noticeable reduction, and therefore you really do have to consider the trade-off with this barrel. 
As for the next one, this is the FTAC 8.9 inch Spitfire barrel. And with this one, we also get an improvement to our aim down sight speed. And this is a much better improvement. Our new aim down sight time with this is 384 milliseconds or four frames less at 60 FPS. And on top of that, we get a boost to our movement speed of 2%. So that takes us up to about 94% movement speed, which is now pretty much equal to assault rifles. Now this does come at the cost of bullet velocity, which again, also comes at the cost of your damage range. We lose 20% of our damage range, just like with the previous barrel. And on top of that, we do lose a little bit of recoil control, which if we have a look at it here, you can definitely see that you are losing some of that accuracy. It is going to kick upwards a little bit, and also it does bounce around a little bit more side to side. So it definitely is more difficult to control with the Spitfire barrel. And this brings us into the final unique attachment for the Holger 26, and this is the 30 round magazine. So this actually significantly decreases your magazine capacity. However, you get an improvement to your aim down sight time. Your new aim down sight time with this is 400 milliseconds. You're saving three frames here. And our overall movement speed is improved by 3%. So very nice boost to our movement speed. One other thing that isn't mentioned with this is our reload time is also changed here. With the 30 round mag, our standard reload add time is 1.74 seconds. So by using this conversion here, you're kind of turning it into an assault rifle. However, that 400 millisecond aim down sight time is still extremely slow for an assault rifle. So if you really want to take it to a full assault rifle build, you're going to have to stack more attachments that help with aim down sight time. But with that, that pretty much covers how the Holger works. Now let's move into some great attachment combinations and example class setups. With this first one, it's designed to be kind of a versatile LMG sort of a build. With this, we've got the compensator to help with our recoil. Tack laser to give us an improved aim down sight time as well as improved stability while aiming down sight. So this is going to help us up close as well as at range. We've got the operator reflex sight on there simply because I really don't like the iron sights on this gun. And also we are going to be picking people off at range with this. Our stock is going to be the XRK axis stock, which is the one that helps with our aim down sight time. And finally, we've got the stippled grip tape for our rear grip. All of this combined gives us a very respectable aim down sight time, very solid recoil control, and we have the advantages of having that great 100 round magazine. So this is the type of LMG that you can use at long range and lock down lanes, but at the same time, you can be a little bit mobile with it due to all the aim down sight time attachments. Taking that one into an example class setup, this one is designed for ground war modes. With this, we've got the Desert Eagle as our secondary, Kill Chain for perk 1, combined with Hardline just so we can earn those lethal streaks really quickly, and then those lethal streaks will just snowball into more lethal streaks. And for our tier 3 perk, this is Shrapnel combined with Thermites to deal with the enemy tanks. As for our tactical, this is just the Stim Shot. So that's the first class setup, and it's actually a pretty nice versatile sort of class setup, especially for ground war modes. Now let's move into the next one, and this is more the G36 Assault Rifle build. With this, we've got that Spitfire Barrel, which is going to give us the best possible aim down sight time. We've got the Reflex Sight on there once again, XRK Axis Stock again for our aim down sight time, Sleight of Hand combined with the 30 round magazine. With this, it basically turns the gun into an assault rifle, and when you stack all these attachments together, you get a half decent aim down sight time. It's still not like the fastest in the assault rifle category, but it's now competitive with assault rifles when it comes to aim down sight time. And overall, I just really like the looks of it, and I like having my G36C back. Now taking that one into an example class setup, I also tend to use this in ground war modes. I mean, let's be honest, that's what I play most of the time anyways. With this, we've got the M19 as our secondary, EOD for perk 1, point man for perk 2. That combination is because I tend to play a bit more aggressive with this. I try to get myself right on the objective, so I need that explosive resistance. And point man is actually pretty good after the season 2 buff. But on top of that, we're once again using shrapnel with those thermites to deal with enemy tanks, as well as a stim shot. And with that, that pretty much wraps it up for today's gun guide on the Holger 26. As for my thoughts on this gun, I do think it is a little bit below average. It's not the absolute worst gun in the game, it's not completely unusable, but at the same time, it just doesn't really seem to excel in any one particular area, with the exception of its magazine capacity and reload time, which just isn't enough for me to really fall in love with a gun. Of course, though, that's just my thoughts on the Holger. I'd like to know in the comment section below, what do you guys think about this gun? Also, something I wanted to ask you guys, now that we've covered all of the assault rifles, SMGs, LMGs, and marksman rifles, with the exception being the crossbow, which class of weapons would you like to see me cover next? Should I get into the sniper rifles, shotguns, or pistols even? Just let me know in the comments down below which one of those weapon classes you'd be most excited to see for this series. And of course, if you guys have missed any of the previous episodes of the series, I will leave a link to the playlist down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.